Uh, it is Tiger Daniel, and in just a few moments, Finding Bigfoot will be here. We really want to put the word out to a large number of people, and what better way would there be than to go on country music radio? So we've hooked up a couple hours with the guys over at KBIG98, and they're going to put us on the air, and we're going to solicit eyewitnesses just to call in and share their stories with us. When we're done, it's going to be KBIGFOOT98. What do you think of Nashville so far? Love it. Beautiful city. One problem with Nashville, there's a lot of honky-tonks here, a lot of drinking. A lot of your witnesses, maybe have they been out? Drinking doesn't make you hallucinate like acid or something. I mean, <laughs> it just makes you think like an ugly chick's a hot chick for a couple hours. You're not going to imagine this chick that's not there. Is <laughs> so let's take some calls and let's get going, all right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm a scoutmaster for Troop 454 in Cedar Hill, Tennessee. Me and my boy scouts took an interest in Bigfoot, and we started our own Bigfoot research team. And we've got like 12 sightings in Robertson County that we've investigated. Out of all the reports that you've investigated in that county, have you gathered any evidence? Yes, I've got one 17 inch long footprint. We were driving back home uh, late one morning. We had our windows down. And I saw what I thought was someone dressed head to toe in thermal clothing at first. And the height and the width of the shoulders, I just could not believe. This is going really well. I like these radio town halls because people that are too shy to talk in front of 100 people can call in from the comfort of their own home and share their stories. We had seen like the bottom third of the body, and it went over a five-foot fence. I've never given any credence to Bigfoot sighting, but I saw the largest, hairiest animal I had ever seen. I'm six foot one. That thing overpowered me by at least a good foot and a half. I had a sighting in the fall of 2012 at about 4 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I went fishing. Of course, nobody was on the lake but myself. I saw something that I just really couldn't describe. It was dark, very big, and then it stood up and took off running up the hill. So it was on two legs, you're saying, when it ran? Yes. Well, I didn't a bear. And we have more than our fair share of witnesses. Usually what we see is that the sighting reports tend to cluster up into just a few areas. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened here. Cliff, Matt, and myself are headed out to meet with Artie and Sherry. They were the couple that called in a town hall that saw one when they were driving. Of course, we're going to follow these guys in person. You don't see a homicide detective doing a murder investigation over the phone. you got to go there, look them in the eyes, see the location, and get a feel for the whole thing. So you're going this direction and looking down this thing? Correct. Tell us what you saw. Walk us through the whole thing, please. Uh, well, it was a beautiful day. As we were coming around this bend here, we saw a being stepping up. And it just kept getting taller and taller and taller. In three steps, it covered to the end of the silver fence. Well, that's, that's like at least 25 feet, so it's like eight foot step. Easily. As we got to the tree line here, we both met eyes and we were both like, we just couldn't we, stop. We know talking what we saw, it. you know, there was no question, no question, period. Were you in the passenger seat, Sherry? Yes. So did you get a longer, better look at it? I could only see it from the post up, and the post came to about right here on the creature. Those posts are like four foot posts. That's a big one for sure. And as I looked at it closer, I knew it could not be a person. And were you aware, or did you think there might be some in the area before that point? I had a, a notion that they were in the, in the backyard that's just half a mile down the road. Well, one evening in particular, there was a, a massive yell. It was like, Wah! you know, it shook the house. The fixtures on the ceiling fan were like reverberating. It's unbelievable how loud they can be. Yeah, also too, it seems like they peel the bark. All the cedar trees that were in my backyard were all peeled between 10 and 20 feet. Yeah. You know. Now this is interesting. Cedar trees aren't especially common in central Tennessee, yet there are cedar trees at Dell's location and at this one. 
What's even more interesting is that Artie is saying that Sasquatches will peel the bark off of cedar trees. And that's something we've heard from several different parts of the country. This area does look like the area where there would be a lot of deer around. It would make sense to me. As soon as I came in here, I was like, wow, this is a big footy area. And so I think you saw one there. I'm a musician. I made a lot of noise out there. That's why I bought the house out in the woods. And I played drums. You know, once I got to going, the place was just rumbling, you know? Oh. And I think that had a lot to do with it. I really do. That, I think we were entertainment for them. <laughs> And he strongly thinks that the music kind of draws the Bigfoots to his particular property. This all seems to be coming together, and I'm loving it so far. Nashville, Tennessee is music city. I happen to be a musician, and we happen to be looking for a night investigation technique. Hmm. So our next step is to try to figure out where to do the night investigation. We're gonna go pick up Renee to see if she learned anything in her few nights out by the military base, and if not, then Matt says he has a plan. Hello. Hey guys. You guys know I went to that location out there by Fort Campbell. Now at one point in the night I did hear this kind of odd sound. It was <laughs> And it almost sounded like potentially like just a gunshot in the distance. Well, none of our witnesses were really slam dunks, but it wasn't a waste of time to check out some of these locations because we picked up a good clue. At Artie and Sherry's location, right where they saw it across, there was a whole wall of cedar trees. And then over at Dell's location, along this lake, walls of cedar trees. So I think they used those as cover. So I talked to our local BFRO people and they said, cedars of Lebanon, that's where we need to go. That's not the only clue we picked up from Artie and Sherry. They've had activity around their house for a while as well. And Artie's swearing it's because he's a musician. He's out playing guitar, singing, he's playing flute, and he says that that seems to be the time when the Sasquatches get a little bit more active. So, we're in Nashville's Music City. I have an idea for our night investigation, but it's a secret. We've spent the week exploring the woods around Nashville and exploring the connection between Bigfoots and music. To those ends, we've invited country singer Casey Lansdale to come squatching with us. And Casey's singing just might be the ticket because we just heard something very squatchy. Huh? What was that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All we should do is check it out. Oh, man, hold, hold. You didn't hear that? What? Either knocks or gunshots from right over there. Bam, bam. I'm, I'm gonna call those guys and ask them about it. Did you guys hear a pop, pop, like knock, popping sounds? I heard nothing. Wait. Might have heard a pop, actually, just right then. Uh, I think we should do a knock or two in case it was a big, but maybe we can get it to knock back and maybe even approach us. Hey, Cliff thinks he might have heard a tree knock, so we're gonna do a knock. Right on, we'll, we'll be quiet. We just keep on moving towards it. 